is up, my dudes? Thank you so much for tuning in for the first official episode of Project PT Vert. I'm really excited to start tearing into this one. I literally just finished filming the review video and I'm already gonna get started tearing into this thing. If you guys haven't seen the review video, you're gonna wanna go check that out. Link up in the corner. I go in depth and actually tell you the story behind this car, why I bought it and what exactly is wrong with it and everything, the whole story about buying it and a full tour of the car. To recap a little bit, basically we have some major timing issues. The car overheated on the previous owner. He assumed that there was issues with the water pump. He started to take it apart to try to work on the water pump and see if it was bad. He realized that it was a much bigger job than he wanted to get into and started to put it back together. When he put it back together, he had to bolt the cam gears back on because apparently he had removed these timing gears right here. When he bolted them back on, he forgot to tighten one of them or both of them. I'm not sure, but he's pretty sure that because of that, one of the pins might have sheared off on the cam on the gear and uh, be causing it to slip and lose time. If that is true, I'm not sure, but I'm not sure if the pin is a part of the gear or it is a part of the cam or if it's a pin that just pops into the cam or how it works. But either way, it could end up being an even bigger job. There's only one way to find out and that is to start tearing this thing apart, see what parts we need and get them ordered. So in this episode, we're gonna get started tearing this thing apart and uh, diagnosing all of our issues, which should be very interesting. It's ironic though because I am currently in the process of doing this job on my PT Cruiser GT. I don't know if the video is out now or if it will be out next, but I am showing you guys really the full process of doing the timing belt and uh, going way more in depth in that video. I'm not going to go in depth as much. I'm going to show you guys the process a little bit just for fun, obviously, and to take you along with this project. But if you really want to know more about the timing belt job, it really sucks. It's tight down in there, but I show the process and how to best do it in that video. So be sure to check that out. Link is or will be up in the corner soon. That being said, uh, first thing we got to do is remove our AC lines. I already verified that there is nothing in the lines and I had it professionally evacuated. So basically we have no AC, no refrigerant in the lines here. These need to come out of the way first and then we'll go ahead and completely remove our upper motor mount, which is already kind of unbolted, but it's not removed. And then we can go ahead and remove our motor mount plate here. And we might end up removing this power steering hose as well because it's kind of in the way. It looks like somebody already tried to do that and spilled it everywhere. So we're going to remove those three little things. The upper timing cover is already off. So once we get all that out of the way, we should be good to go. We can start unbolting other stuff. Our AC lines loose, we can bend them up out of the way. Just have to remove this bolt, pull our motor mount out, and get at the bolts for that plate. see just how much more room there is down in here to get at all of our bolts. It's gonna make our life so much easier now with all of that out of the way. For the next stuff we have to do, I went ahead and jacked the car up just a little bit, just enough that we can pull the wheels off of the front of the car and so that we can pull this wheel off and get up in here at our motor mount and stuff and get at everything from the bottom. This is, this is my first time jacking the car up. I decided to go ahead and give the suspension a little wiggle and just as I was afraid of, I don't know if you guys can see that if it's visible, but there is a little bit of play. Not too much, but a little bit, and it seems to be coming from our tie rod end here. On the other side, it's feeling very similar, so I'm gonna check all of our bushings and our ball joints and stuff. Well, we have it off the ground, but I think we're definitely at least gonna be throwing a new set of tie rod ends on this thing at some point, which isn't a big deal. We got a little bit before we have to worry about that. Let's go ahead and take this wheel off and continue with getting everything taken apart. Yeah, man, these look like they could be like the original tie rod ends. That is disgusting. <laughs> now that we're up under the car, we can get at the rest of the things we need to access, which among them is this little rubber push and grommet thingy. 
And right there is the bolt for the middle motor mount. That's what really supports the motor. I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt this little strut torque mount thing real quick. I think that's just like a 15 mil. Put the jack under the motor, put some support on it, and then we can go ahead and remove that bolt right there, which will basically completely free up our motor, and then we can start removing our bolts. There's a tiny bit of upward pressure on the oil pan right now with my jack. I have a block of wood there to protect everything. We should be able to break this loose. As so you could see, it is a big Torx bit. And thankfully, I have that laying around right here. T55, baby. Quick hit with the impact, and it came right out. So now we got that unbolted. We can raise the lower the motor a little bit gently as needed to continue to unbolt this plate, but it should be good now. There's one bolt here, one bolt here. I think there's a couple more up underneath here, but I'm not really sure. Probably what we'll do is once we get those out, we'll go ahead and maybe try to lower the motor a little bit so we can get a closer look at that stuff. And I'm going to kind of myth bust if I have to take the crank pulley off. I am going to have to pull the serpentine belts off, which will be really easy because for one thing, that belt's always easy because it's just a little tensioner, but this belt will be easy for the alternator because the tensioner bolt is literally right there in the wide open, but we'll get to that later. I'm not gonna worry about that quite yet. For now, let's just go ahead and get these bolts out. So I completely forgot, but our power steering pump actually bolts to this big plate. You can hopefully see that metal right there, that right there, that is the plate. There's one more bolt here. So then it goes around to our power steering pump over here. This power steering pump and it bolts to that. There's like a little wing that comes off of it. Looks like we are gonna have to go ahead and remove that. It's not a huge deal, but the problem is it's very hard to get at the two bolts that hold the power steering pump down in there. Pretty deep, you can see the one there and the one there. And it's, I mean, it's doable with removing some of this, like remove the grill and the upper radio support, you can get a little flex. I wanna perform a lot of maintenance and I wanna clean out a bunch of stuff, throw a new cam sensor in there and make sure everything is good to go. I think I am gonna go ahead and for the next part, remove our whole radio assembly especially because this is an na car turbo models it is much harder to remove this whole assembly you can see i already have it out of this car because we have an intercooler there's power steering cooler and a bunch of stuff like that along with it on that car it is harder to remove but on this car all we should have to do is remove the grill and the upper rad support and disconnect our lines and we should be good so i guess that's the next step with this project <laughs> Already went ahead and disconnected our lines. Got our lower radio hose disconnected, the upper disconnected, obviously. We already had our one AC line disconnected. I just had to reach in here and unbolt this line here. You can see it's already unbolted. Our transmission lines, well, they weren't in the best of condition. I ended up cutting them, but I'll show you that once we get it out of the car. But as far as I know, other than disconnecting the fan really quick, we should be good to pull this out. Pretty sure I got transmission fluid or, or coolant or something in my hair in the process of doing this, but I finally got the radiator out. You can tell that none of that was messed with in a very long time, if ever. So the connectors were a little harder to get apart and things like that, but now we have access to everything. Crank sensor we're definitely gonna be replacing and definitely gonna clean all of this up in general and spray some stuff with some good paint. Also, what is this? It's like a napkin or something? Ew, that's disgusting. Disgusting. But the main thing is we have access at our power steering pump bolts now. It looks like someone already started backing that one out, interestingly. So three bolts and I'm probably just going to completely remove this. Those last two things removed, our plate is free. It's now wiggling a tiny bit, but we have to get the motor jacked up a little bit so that it will clear the motor mount and we can pull it out. 
there's these two little tabs down there that kind of line up the motor mount, the bushing with the plate, kind of keep it situated. Those are what's mainly getting in the way and keeping us from pulling this out just enough for this to clear right here, the timing cover back in there, kind of conflict with each other. So we may or may not have to remove at least all but one of the motor mount bolts so we can swing it and pull it with the plate. But I just noticed it looks like there's already two of the bolts missing right there. Normally there'd be two motor mount bolts there. You can see there's one of them right there and there's one below it. So I'm not sure about that. that that's kind of interesting. Maybe you started taking that apart already as well. I don't know, but we're going to figure that out later. For now, I'm going to see if I can figure this out and get that bottom bolt out maybe or the top bolt. So we can go ahead and pull this out. All right, we finally got it. Woo! That was such a struggle, but we finally got it out. So basically, uh, I have to have a mental note now that I loosen up the motor mount first and get that so that it can move around freely so that we have enough room, enough play to get the plate out. It wasn't bad, but now this is completely loose here. As you can see, that is our whole motor mount assembly. In anticipation of having to remove our crank pulley, I went ahead and got these pulley pullers. I got a I think a four inch and a six inch puller. And we're gonna be using this little four inch. I already have it partly taken apart and I'll show you why in just a minute. But first thing we gotta do obviously is get the bolt out. I believe it is an 18. And something I forgot to do, but I just did really quick is get the alternator belt loose. And now I'm gonna go ahead and rethread this bolt a little. Reason being is the end of our puller um, is too big to fit into the hole. Basically, I'm going to rethread this bolt in and I'm actually gonna put the end of the puller on the bolt um, and pull it until it touches and uh, then go from there. Is it a little bit sketchy to do it that way? Yes, but um, we're gonna give it a shot anyways. And basically, the reason why I partly took this apart is because I couldn't fit all the arms in um, with it all together. So basically, I'm gonna kind of feed this arm in so we're gonna go ahead and put this one in and uh, bolt it onto the puller. Kind of a pain in the butt way of doing it, but it works. It'd be nice to have a special puller that's a little bit smaller, but they're a little hard to find that are smaller than a four inch. All right, now that we got all our arms in place, you can see what that looks like right there. We should be able to start pulling on this and hopefully it pulls out easily, but we shall see. Started pulling for sure. The bolt is completely out. And so was our pulley. That actually worked really well. And with that out of the way, our lower timing cover is also already out of the way as well. Normally we'd have to remove that. But now we can see our timing and we can also see that our timing is off. According to that, we might actually not be perfectly in line up top, are we? Oh, why is my light dying? Yeah, it's, a, it's out of time up top. It needs to go around another turn or two. All right, after rotating the crank some more, I think I rotated it ended up three times because the pulleys were upside down still, but we got it almost, almost on our mark, like really close. And our marks up here are slightly off still. They're supposed to line up basically within one tooth, but you can kind of see one mark there and one mark way up there still. So something is definitely obviously probably weird with the timing. We're gonna have to redo all of that. But the main thing we wanna do right now is see if that is due to one of the pins on the cams being messed up or if it's just simply out of time. So now we just gotta go ahead and uh, pull our cam gears off and uh, figure it out, which is gonna require us to remove the timing belt. So basically, to get the belt loose, um, you just gotta loosen the main bolt there, a little 13 millimeter in the middle, and then the whole plate, you can stick a little quarter inch socket in and the whole plate will spin. As you can hopefully see here, the whole plate spins and will remove tension. Whoops, and I dropped my wrench. It's like a little plate in the middle. It's really weird how it works, but as you can now hopefully see, I relieve the tension on our timing belt. Our timing belt actually doesn't look bad, which makes me wonder if it was replaced at one point. And pull it down out of our way a little bit here. But now to get our cam gears off, to check everything, we need something to actually hold cam gears physically in place. And they make all kinds of fancy little tools for the gears. And I was gonna get one, but I forgot. And uh, I kind of wanted to try something a little different. So I went ahead and threw this little thing together. It's basically just a piece of strip metal that I had laying around. I don't know, maybe it's like an inch wide, maybe longer. I don't know. I'm pretty sure these are like 5 16 bolts I had laying around. I just used two nuts to hold them. I drilled the hole slightly to the side 
side. As you can see, it's fitting between. I drilled our holes about two and a half inches apart and it worked out perfectly. Fit in our spokes just about perfect when I pull it to the side and it gives us plenty of room to get a wrench on. Will it be enough that we can uh, put some torque on a wrench and break this loose? I don't know, but we're gonna find out. That worked like a charm. Out comes our first cam bolt. And off comes our cam gear. Our cam gear looks to be in good shape. This pin seems to be perfectly fine. It looks like somebody marked the cam gear at some point just to play it safe, which is really good to see. All right. Oh yeah, oh, yep. Look at that, I just broke the bolt loose. And that is, um, that is already spinning. I'm starting to have hope that maybe, maybe, just maybe our pin wasn't the issue. Maybe it's just really out of time, but um, yeah, that's never what you wanna see. Our pin is indeed a part of our camshaft. And as you guys can see, it is completely sheared off. <laughs> that is gonna be our first issue, man. That, that is kinda sad, but I mean, it was to be expected. When I bought this car, I knew that that's what we were gonna get into, but I kinda, kinda was hoping that we get lucky, but we didn't. And uh, yeah, our cam gears are not the issue. I don't need to get new gears. I need to fix our pin. And uh, we might be able to simply fix the pin. I'm not sure, but we're gonna find out. Hopefully we don't have to replace a whole uh, camshaft. Off camera, I just went ahead and pulled off our idler pulley right here and our tensioner pulley as well. I also pulled these four little bolts. I think they're eight millimeters and then these two little 13s on the bottom of our back uh, timing cover thing. And now it should just come right on out of here. There she goes. Now we got that out of the way and um, we are completely torn down. Minus uh, the water pump, but that we're actually gonna be taking care of that in the next video There's not a whole lot um, that goes along with doing the water pump pretty straightforward And um, I mean it hasn't really been leaking that I could see so not really any excitement there and here we are We are bare we are down to the bone here pretty much And that's really exciting because now we can make some huge progress and really get some stuff done A lot of you guys have been asking me if I'm gonna do anything else while I'm in here like cam seals and crank seal Stuff like that just as some preventative maintenance I'm not sure if we're gonna do that or not. Maybe cam seals, but I'm not like super worried about it. I know that it is an issue sometimes on higher mileage cars, but I guess you guys just have to wait and see on that one. Maybe we'll make some videos replacing all of our seals while we're at it. I might end up doing some of that stuff here on the PTGT once we get in there and tear everything apart and really start looking at everything. But we're not at that point yet with this. That's going to be the next, one of the next videos you see for sure. We'll be completely tearing this down as well. And uh, we're gonna have timing belt. I keep saying timing belt, the movie. Uh, coming out soon. That's gonna be great and uh, it's gonna be kind of the timing belt video I owe you guys because made videos a long time ago on it and they're really bad No clue what I was doing, but hopefully we can make a little bit of a better version now That is a lot more entertaining uh, a little bit more fun to watch and uh, Hopefully more helpful for anybody that finds themselves in this situation So pretty much in this episode we figured out for the most part what we need to do next and what our damage is. And it looks like primarily we do have the one pin in this camshaft that is sheared off. We are gonna be replacing that as of now. I have already ordered all of our new parts and some new uh, pins for them because they are actually pretty easy to find. And I'll be talking about all that in uh, the next video. The next video on this project you see, we will be fixing our cam, talking more about cam crank seals and all of the other stuff down in there and uh, then we'll be going ahead and putting our timing back in, getting everything timed and uh, then testing our head gasket and seeing how that looks. That's kind of what you have to look forward to with this. So be sure, of course, if you haven't already, smash the subscribe button, turn on your notifications as well so that you stay up to date on the uploads. I try to uh, keep my eye on uploads when they first go up, apply to comments and things like that and kind of interact with you guys a little bit more when the videos first go up. Kind of hang out with the notification squad. It's a lot of fun, so be sure to turn those notifications on. We also got a lot of cleaning up to do, some other maintenance to do while we have the whole front end taken apart and just a bunch more to come for sure. But we learned a lot in this episode and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to give it a big fat thumbs up if you did. Now that we got this all torn down and we got things going, I am so hyped to continue to putter with this and keep working on it for the next couple weeks. But while we wait for the parts for this car that'll hopefully be here next week, I have plenty of work to do on this car, so be sure to stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you so much for the support on the new convertible project. I know a lot of you guys are not a huge convertible fan. A lot of you guys may not be a, a huge second gen fan, but it's gotten still a lot of uh, positive response and I'm really happy about that and I'm thankful you guys sticking around. Hopefully by the end of this series, I will make you like these cars if you don't already because they're just so fun. But again, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. You rock. God bless you guys, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.